Hola, buenas tardes, good afternoon, my beautiful people. Welcome back to the channel. It's your girl here, Daniela, Miss Four Lizard, aka the Planning Diva. And today I am finally getting into my faith planner. It's been a while. I definitely stepped away from my faith planner in the last couple of months because I've just been so incredibly busy but I felt like taking some time today to work in my faith planner and um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just taking some time today to be, you know, connecting with the universe, with the Lord and just um, being spiritual. So I have my faith planner here. I have a couple of sticker books um, that I like to use in my faith planner um, here as well. And today's plan is to set up my spiritual calendar for the month of May. So this was my spiritual calendar last month. I have a lot of fun setting up these calendars. They're basically like an interfaith astrological calendar and I just um, keep track of just different spiritual religious holidays from various faiths as well as astrological cycles and it's very it's very interfaith and it's uniquely me so i have a lot of fun setting these up and it's time to set up the uh the interfaith calendar for the month of may so if you're uh, interested in seeing how i set this up just keep on watching So before I get into this video, I just want to quickly say that this planner is a new planner and it's from their, their new 18 month release. It's gorgeous. It gives me Rebecca Campbell, um, work your light oracle card realness, but also like throw in Yosemite's granite faces. Beautiful. Absolutely stunning. I love the peach discs. The cover page is stunning. And um, I actually, like this planner actually starts in July. So the planner, like the actual planner pages don't start until um, until July here. But I, um, I stuck in three months from another faith planner that I have that I was using before I got this planner. I stuck in three months um, into here. So that way I could just, you know, reach for this gorgeous planner already. So that's one way that you can um, like hurry up <laughs> using those newer planners that start in July if you want to get into them but you, you don't want to like redate months or anything like that you can always just toss in some planner pages from your other planners and just kind of like feel like you're starting up the planner and something else that i want to say um with this planner i actually made the executive decision to treat this planner more like a workbook and a journal than an actual planner. I think the only like planner, um, the only planner elements that I am going to keep up with are the calendar pages. And then the weekly pages, I want to use these more as journaling pages and not care to keep up with the time aspect of it. So every anytime I feel like I want to do some faith journaling, I will flip to the next blank page in the planner and then work on that on those pages until they're filled up and then I'll move on to the next uh, the next couple of pages and you know if I just white out these dates at the top here the pages themselves are really really conducive towards faith journaling and just reflecting in general so for that reason I don't want to switch to like a happy notes or a journal or anything like that because I like the structure of the faith planner but I don't need to have the dates. So if I only work on two pages, you know, the entire month of April, which is what happened here, I am just going to leave these in here. I am going to move these pages the month of May here. And maybe, well, actually, should I? Hmm, I'm thinking. 
Well, actually, no. You know what I will do? I will leave these pages here. I was going to move them, but I decided not to. I'll leave these pages here. And then I'll just continue to work in each month. And then at the end of the year, I'm going to have a lot of blank pages because I probably will only use like, you know, two to four pages um, a, a, a month. I probably won't use like all of the pages. I'll have a couple of blank pages. And what I'll do, I'll just go. And then at the end of the year, I'll just go back and take out those blank pages and then put them like in a stack of pages I can reuse again so that way and that way you know I'm saving those pages but I'm also just taking my time with faith journaling and not feeling like I have to like do it every single day so let's get started so let me pull out these pages I usually like to leave the pages on the rings when I plan but in cases where I have a lot of pages on one side and very little pages on the other, like happens when um, you barely start a planner, it's really uneven. And so it kind of weirds me out. So I'll just take them off the pages for now. And how I usually set up this monthly interface spiritual spread, I have my laptop right here next to me. And I have a couple of bookmarked pages I like to reference when I make this spread. I have an interfaith calendar, I have an astrological calendar, I have an Aztec calendar, and I have a moon phase calendar all pulled up on my laptop right now. And I will just go ahead and check out all of those calendars and make a note of everything that I want to make a note of, anything that I find interesting. And yeah, that's how I end up uh, setting up my interfaith calendar. I'm gonna go ahead and white out some of these labels here because I don't need them on this calendar. And I'm actually gonna white out the Eid uh, label here because I'm just gonna replace it with an actual like box. So I don't need the little text there. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up all of the dates and um, decorate and then at the end of the video I'll come back on and show you everything I've mapped onto the pages and basically my thought process behind it. So let's get into it.
All right, everyone, I think we're done here. Another long video that I will edit to be at a reasonable, a reasonable length. But this is it. This is the finished uh, monthly calendar. Let me pop these pages back onto the discs and then I will tell you all that I did. It was so much fun. This video is definitely, it does take a while like to, to set up because it does involve, you know, like research and reading a couple of things because I generally tend to have to like look things up to kind of uh, get an understanding of, of, you know, what they are. So it does take a while, but it is so much fun and I love the finished product so much. It just, it makes my soul happy. I love like the spiritual new agey vibes that this gives. And I just love using my sticker studio, Apothecary Sticker Gallery for the Modern Mystic. I love all these like witchy stickers. Definitely gonna repurchase that at some point. Um, that's where these stickers come from, the larger uh, stickers with the colorful background. So let me walk you through what I did. I used, first of all, a bunch of stickers uh, from the Zodiac sticker book, the Cosmic Watercolor sticker book. I actually picked up two of these because I knew that I was gonna use um, quite a bit of them. And I also used stickers from Peace Within the sticker book. I pulled out the Stargazer, but I didn't pull for any of these stickers because they're just a little too like dark. Um, and this was very much like a more of a cosmic watercolor pastel theme. I might pull for that stargazer um, as we get into fall. But I put a bunch of full box stickers on the sidebar just for decoration because I don't really use that section. And then let's go, uh, let's go day by day. So May the 1st marks the day of Beltane. This is a pagan fire festival celebrating the coming summer. And I actually think um, it is also known as the Gaelic May Day Festival, um, which, so this is, this is uh, halfway between the spring equinox and the summer solstice. And so it is celebrated in, um, in like Gaelic tradition, but also um, celebrated as a uh, part of like pagan and Wiccan um, spirituality. So that is happening May the 1st. And then May the 2nd, huge holiday, Eid. This is the Islamic holiday celebrating the end of Ramadan. And um, it's such a huge celebration there. Um, also, the planet Venus enters the constellation of Aries on May the 2nd. So that's interesting. I am trying not to make a note of every single planetary movement because it just, it gets overwhelming very quickly because there's so much going on in the constellations and in the cosmic landscape. So I am trying to just make a note of the more like, um, the more interesting movements to me. So I always tend to keep track of where Venus is because I think it's because I'm a Taurus and um, uh, my sign is ruled by the planet Venus. Maybe that's why I'm, I'm very interested in Venus, but Venus of course is the planet of love. So I think that's also another reason why I like to keep track of it, but she's moving into Aries. So love is gonna get a little bit spicy for um, the first couple weeks of May. And then nothing's really going on until May the 8th, which is the birthday of Buddha. It's also the first quarter moon of this month. And then on the 10th, we have Mercury going retrograde, which is going to be, ugh, that's gonna be hard, especially since I'm traveling in this time. So I'm just gonna have to, um, I'm just gonna have to uh, roll with the punches. And then the planet Jupiter is moving into Aries. So anything that moves into Aries marks like a time of like fast paced action and kind of like hot tempers. So watch out. And then on the 12th of May, we have the beginning of the 13 day water era. So this is according to the Aztec calendar. The Aztec calendar is a 260 day sacred calendar that is divided into 20 sections of 13 days each. Each section is ruled by a different entity 
and this uh, this 13 day period that starts May 12th is ruled by water and so I actually have like an appendix in the back here where I've been writing down what each era means so let's see if I have water yes so water is a day of purification by subjecting oneself to the ordeal of conflict. These are good days for battle, bad days for resting. Um, water brings out the scorpion, which must sting its enemies or else sting itself. This is the day of the holy war, which is always a battle with one's own enemies within. 13 days of instability. So that's, yeah, I guess water is always like an intense time, but I really like how um, the main theme of water is like self purification and battling one's own inner demons. That's the theme of the water era. So that's going to be exciting times. And then moving on, we have a full moon in Scorpio on the 15th. Um, it, we're actually going to experience a lunar eclipse as well. So that will be cool to see um, at night. And then on the 16th, this is something I like is new to me. I didn't realize this was a thing until I looked at my interfaith calendar, but apparently it's Vesak. So this is a holiday of Theravada Buddhism. It's a festival signifying birth, death, and enlightenment of the Buddha. So that's really interesting. Moving on, we have um, Gemini season starting on the 20th. So that's exciting. I'm a Taurus, so this is my season right now. So I'm kind of sad to see um, to see Taurus season go and Gemini roll in, but it is what it is. Moving on to the 22nd, we have the last quarter moon. Also, Mercury retrograde moves into Taurus. And again, I don't keep uh, track of every single planetary motion, but I do like keeping track of anything that has Taurus in it because I'm a Taurus and these uh, these movements uh, really impact me. So I, I kind of keep track of the ones that are more impactful for me personally. And then on the 24th, we have Mars moving into Aries. So we have a lot of things in Aries this, this um this month, which is going to be a shit show. <laughs> Anyways, we also have the declaration of the Bob. This is a day marking the prediction of the Bob as a messenger of God and by faith. So this is a faith that was founded in the 1800s in Iran, and it centers around the central figure of Baha Ulua. I, I am probably mispronouncing that, but this, uh, it centers around this messenger, which the, the adherents to this faith believe that this messenger is the latest in like the series of divine messengers from God, and um, they just consider him the, the latest messiah. So there is that. And then moving on, on the 25th, we have the wind era. Um, so just like we were in water, we're moving into wind, and these cycles come in 13-day cycles, so that's why um, we're coming up on wind already. So wind is also an era that is marked by instability and insecurity, so these are bad days for cooperation, um, and these are good days to root out bad habits. Uh, these are 13 days ruled by the divine whirlwind that creates chaos out of order. And in these days, order and reason outlive their purposes and must be replaced by the potential for new and unexpected things. So there's a lot of unpredictable change coming. It's an era that's ruled by wind, which is, of course, this element that is so intangible and, you know, unpredictable. So that is going to be interesting. And then on the 26th, we have Ascension Day. This is a Christian holiday. It marks the 40th day after Easter when Jesus ascended into heaven. I'm interested in learning more about that. And then on the 28th, we have Venus moving into Taurus. Again, I like keeping track of where Venus is. And then on the 30th, we have the new moon in Gemini. This is a really like important day for me. New moons in general are days that I like to keep track of. 
um, because they're great days for spell casting and manifesting and just sowing seeds for um, for the future month. So I want to get back into doing new moon and full moon rituals. I took a break from doing a lot of moon magic because this life got so busy, but I want to get back into it and I want to use this faith planner to really help me um, just be more in tune with my spirituality, which is very hippie and multi-faith. And that's it. That's the entirety of May. I added some cute stickers and washi tape here, but I really love how this turned out. And I'm just excited to launch into my spirituality and faith this month. And I'm just going to start journaling on these pages. Hopefully I get, you know, maybe two or three pages filled up this month. And then, you know, I'll just move on to June when it's that time. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a blast making it. Um, and definitely let me know if there's anything I should add to this calendar. If there's spiritual days, holy days that you know of or that you practice, I would love to know more more about them and add them onto my calendar. I truly believe that every religion, every faith system, every form of spirituality has something to teach us and that is why I am a practicing multi-faith spiritualist because I just like taking the best of all worlds and I really am praying for a world in which um, we can come together, you know, over religious differences and just celebrate each other's spiritual beliefs. All right, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful day. Uh, stay safe, stay blessed, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.